Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a very interesting organization, and that is the American Society for Public Administration. My guest is an expert on this topic. Mr. Bill William Shields is the Executive Director for the American Society for Public Administration. Bill Shields, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Bill, thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to join you and your audience. I appreciate you being with me. We could do this probably every other week. You've got so much going on. <laughs> we have enough we, material at this point. We've got the material. We're not short on material, that's for sure. But we're going to get into ASPA in a minute. But let's, in general terms, we hear so often about civil servants, public employees, folks like that. How do you define a public administrator? That's It's much broader than what I just said. I know, considerably broader, I'm sure. It's, it, Bill, it's the question that my parents still ask, and I've worked in the public administration <laughs> field for probably 30 years. Uh, so so the, way, um, the way I like to describe it uh, to people who don't understand the term or who look at it as a particularly ambiguous or even complicated term is that uh, public administrators are the public service professionals who do the public's business, who work for the public good. And... They range from anyone from elected officials uh, who we see take the oath or run for political office and on a, on a policy platform. Um, but then we also have the people who actually administer that policy. And those really are the administrators. Those are our people who um, you know, guard, your, guard your neighborhood and make sure that they're safe uh, from police officers uh, and, and county administrators to those who might be fixing the traffic light down the street that you've been complaining about for such a long period of time because it's been out. Uh, they include people like emergency management officials. You know, we're, we're in a season now where we're, we're just entering hurricane season. We have tremendous issues regarding the climate and climate change and the impact on each and every one of us. The emergency responders who, who respond to those natural disasters or, or problems, they're public administrators, um, as well as those who actually teach the field of public administration. So we at ASPA, we're the organization, and we've been around a long time, about 85 years, we're the organization that brings together both the scholarship, actually study and teach public administration, as well as the practitioners, those who are actually on the front lines and who actually do the public work for the public good. Exactly. And our viewers can go to your website at www.aspanet.org to get more information on ASPA. But it's a great organization. I've been a member for many, many years, since back in you the have. 80s. Yes, as I recall. But it's a fantastic organization. I would encourage people to take a look at it. Well, let's talk about some of the activities that you have underway. You will, you do generally, before COVID anyway, do a conference each year. You have a variety of different conferences. You have a memoranda of understanding with folks in various parts of the world, with uh, Chinese, with the United Nations, with sure. uh, South Africa and on across the board. That's right. Uh, talk a little bit about some of your international outreach. Let's just go in that direction. Sure. Uh, yeah, those who aren't familiar with our organization um, or with public administration, professional associations even, um, you know, sometimes they see the word American in the title of organizations like ours and they think, oh, an American focus. And in some respects, that's true. Um, we have a membership of somewhere between 10 and 15,000 people, professionals, um, and the vast majority of them live and work in the United States. About 93% of our total membership is inside the United States. But at the same time, we know that the work of public administration really does transcend geographic boundaries. Uh, many of the lessons that we have here in the United States, again, whether it's scholarship uh, in theory, or actual practice, how you actually do public service on the front lines, as I said earlier, um, those lessons can be exported to all different parts of the world, just as much as America can learn from other parts of the world as well. So ASPA has really, for probably about 35 years, Bill, uh, been committed to um, a focus on internationalization where we look for partnerships with like-minded organizations, professional associations like ours, um, outside the United States, so that we can undertake programs 
and uh, programs and events and conferences and, and scholarship and communications uh, with them uh, around areas of common purpose or common interest. So, so those relationships that we have, uh, they're formal and they're informal. Uh, and the formal relationships we have are with about two dozen uh, professional associations based outside the United States. You mentioned a few uh, countries where we have them, Bill, South Africa, China, uh, France, uh, the United Kingdom, Mexico, uh, Australia, I could keep going on, um, but they're with organizations that have purposes similar to ours. Uh, and we undertake a series of, of, of joint programming. I mean, examples are um, we often invite representatives of those organizations to our annual conference. You just mentioned we have an annual conference every year, uh, sidelines like many organizations by COVID, but we're back in person. Um, and so we invite representatives of those organizations to share their lessons and their experiences with our with our attendees. Uh, we often go to their conferences and do the same. Again, that information exchange, that 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 sharing of knowledge and lessons and promising practices. Um, we also do e-learning. Um, so much of our work, uh, like again, a lot of organizations, uh, is online. Um, and, and, and based in trying to reach people where they are rather than expecting them to come to where we physically are located. So we have a large uh, e-learning series uh, where, we, where we bring together experts from around the world online and again, share those common experiences. We did a session about three or four months ago with a series of, of experts, again, practitioners and academics from India well, where we talked about issues related to public finance. And so we brought American aspects of public finance to the conversation, just like the experts from India did as well. So we always try to find a good niche with a particular partner. Our, our MOUs, our agreements with these institutions are not cookie cutter. We really try to find out what a particular area of the world is, is finding as its, its, its foremost challenges. Um, and we try to find a way to bring our expertise and to bring our thought leadership to the conversation, again, just as they do with us. And as you mentioned, we can learn from one another. That's the important sure can. thing. It's not that any one country, one group has all the answers, and we can certainly share information and it really make our jobs easier to make us more effective in delivering services to the public. And that's, that's right. really the bottom line of what we're about. But that's very important. Now, one uh, operation you've had has been with the United Nations and you've uh, conducted the uh, Symposium of Public Administration Experts with the UN. What exactly, that's with the Department for Economic and Social Affairs, I think, DESA. What exactly is that? that that's right, Bill. So um, the United Nations, um, uh, holds on an annual basis. It's usually in April, sometimes in March, almost always in spring, um, what we colloquially call Public Administration Week. And it's the one time of year that the United Nations brings in its Committee of Public Administration Experts. Um, so it is a session that the United States, uh, United Nations holds uh, with United, uh, with, with practitioners as, but primarily academics uh, from around the world, each one uh, representing a different country, kind of like what you would see with the General Assembly of the United Nations. And for those five days, the um, the Committee of, of Public Administration Experts um, considers debates, tries to find recommendations regarding a particular topic that's been identified by uh, the bureau that oversees oversees this committee. And not surprisingly for many of your viewers, the topic over the past several years has been the sustainable development goals uh, that the United Nations has put out for quite some time. And so the committee has been focused on that. Um, the, uh, the role for our organization, for ASPA uh, during, public during that week is not to oversee any aspect of what the United Nations is hosting and, and managing but using it as an opportunity to connect with our, our colleagues and our counterparts from other organizations. Because even though we can connect with them by email or online by Zoom or in person, if they come to our conference or we go to theirs, um, you really try to have, and you really wanna have some sustained conversation with, with them. And so, pub so uh, Public Administration Week at the United Nations in New York 
uh, provides us the opportunity to actually come together under a kind of a five day physical uh, in person in person format uh, to really have side uh, off offline conversations as well as as formal conversations that the UN that the UN hosts. Uh, we do have ASPA does have and we renewed it in um, in 2020 I believe 2020 or 2021 a memorandum of understanding uh, with the United Nations uh, so that um, we are able to disseminate th uh, through our communications networks work that the United Nations is doing with regard to the sustainable development goals with regard to its committee of public administration experts. Uh, and they're good enough, the United Nations is good enough to, to disseminate information that we, um, that we have, uh, that ASPA has produced to reach its, its it's its broad network of, of stakeholders. And the 17 sustainable development goals are goals that are incorporated by a large number of public administrators every day in their regular work schedules to eliminate poverty, to eliminate hunger, to combat right. climate change, to create a sustainable environment, to clean up the oceans, just on across the board. And that's the interesting thing too, Bill, over the years, I know at the United Nations, they always describe themselves as international civil servants, which right. is true. They are, but they are public administrators. Everybody at the United Nations is a public administrator who's doing something to move aircraft safely in international airspace, ships, mail, weather information, combat polio, working with Rotary International to eliminate the horrific disease of polio, just on across the board. But that's just an extension of public administration in the international arena, which is extremely important. But uh, so often we just don't make that leap, I think, or uh, not we, but the public, perhaps. That that that's exactly right, Bill. And 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 to your point about the professionals who actually work for the United Nations, the United Nations, in many respects, is is regarded as a model employer of choice, um, so much so that. Uh, we had a uh, we had a session at our conference this year where we invited one of the um, one of the uh, leaders responsible for recruitment and hiring at the United Nations to basically give a very hands on uh, practical tutorial uh, for our members and others um, who are interested in applying for the United Nations. So we actually had a UN representative speaking to our audience about the basics of how you actually apply for a job with the UN, knowing that that is an organization that really does uh, attract a lot of interest. It certainly does. There's no doubt about it, most assuredly. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. We invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you're involved with a PBS or a community access television station, or perhaps an educational institution that has an intra campus television hookup, or you just have a podcast or a computer, you like our shows, you would like to share them, please feel free to do so. Global Connections Television is provided at no cost as a public service to help us better understand international issues. Today, we're taking a look at a very interesting organization, and that is the American Society for Public Administration. And my guest today is Mr. Bill Shields, who is the executive director. Bill, one thing that's caught me, was, well, many things caught me with some of your press releases, but one, you just recently, I guess recently, put that in quotes, but did a, a report on meeting the challenges of international engagement. What, uh, briefly, what are some of the highlights of that particular report? Sure, um, and the report's focus was not, uh, it was certainly focused on, on ASPA, but it really does take place within a larger context. And, and, it, and the report and the committee that produced it recognized that um, the whole notion of international engagement, uh, professionals, uh, engaging with other professionals in different parts of the world is is very important. It's very important uh, to bring together a broad and engaged cross section of these professionals because it provides them greater opportunity for uh, for exchange, both formal and informal, and it helps organizations like ours um, get greater visibility and reputation 
uh, to parts of the world where we're not as well known or, or known at all. Um, and as I said before, um, that focus has been around ASPA for quite some time. Uh, but it's important to recognize, and we would be um, uh, we would not be fair to ignore it, um, is that um, that this engagement takes place in the context of a very challenging period for people who try to do the public good or who teach public administration uh, and public policy. And, and, and those challenges are, are very significant. They vary in different parts of the world, uh, but they can be very, very um, concerning or very, very dangerous. Uh, limits on, on academic freedom, um, threats to fundamental human rights, uh, undermining of democratic processes. Um, and I would also note that these are not challenges that exist outside the United States alone. They take place here as well. So knowing that these things take place and very often governments are involved, national governments are involved, or in our case, state, state governments as well, um, how do we engage with organizations in these areas to make sure that core values, key values of international engagement are preserved? Um, and, and those key values range from promoting uh, dialogue and understanding to respecting and protecting civil rights, uh, um, human rights rather, um, respecting the self-determination of communities. If we believe that those key values are fundamental to engaging with others abroad, how do we actually make sure that those key values are respected and promoted? And that can be very difficult. Um, because and, and so the committee that, that produced this report walked through a series of, of steps that an organization, and in our case, ASPA, because the committee did the report for us, should undertake when thinking through a relationship with an organization or a government outside the United States. Um, before we sign an MOU or before we undertake a particular activity like a journal or an event or conference um, or have something where we're recognized as a partner or a sponsor with that organization outside the United States, have we intentionally had a very specific conversation around how the nature of that relationship, whatever form it takes, takes into consideration those key values that are so important to international engagement. And in some respects, that sounds like common sense, but think through it this way. If we were to say to an organization in a particular country outside the United States, um, we want to ensure that you have a commitment to key values like respect for human rights and self-determination of communities, in order for our partnership to, to advance and to continue, um, I think it would not be very difficult for some of your viewers to identify several countries where an organization in those countries will say, well, no, wait a minute. Uh, we might disagree with kind of how you define this. That does not mean the relationship comes to an end. That does not mean the relationship is not going to be advanced. But having that conversation and balancing what our purposes of that relationship are with the key values that we hold as intrinsic to our mission, that's the intentional conversation we have to have. So in a sense, the committee bill came forward with this report in a very, with a very practical perspective, saying here are the things that you as an organization should be taking into consideration, should be discussing in terms of international relationships. And hopefully, those are the sorts of questions that other organizations uh, like ASPA can undertake. So in a sense, the committee almost kind of had provided uh, a model roadmap, not just for ASPA, but for other organizations as well. Exactly. And as you were going through all of those uh, items that are so important, I was applying them to the United States. And for decades, really centuries, you come right down to it, I guess, the United States was really a, the a paradigm of the, let's say, having the proper infrastructure to deliver public administration services to the general public until recently. And that has changed quite dramatically. We've seen it. We've seen it with uh, this onslaught of attacks on undermining our governmental institutions, on attacking the media, 
on yammering about fake news, talking about all this stuff with no proof whatsoever, but right. just throwing it out. And then you have media outlets like Fox, One America News, Newsmax, different ones like that, who are putting out this mis misinformation. Of course, we saw where Fox got its uh, wallet lifted to some degree not long ago for about $750 million right. for pumping out lie after lie after lie in the evenings. And this this is what the public administrators, who are pretty much nonpartisan to a large degree, they're bipartisan, if you want to call them that, nonpartisan, and they're delivering services. When you're working as an air traffic controller, you're, you're not a Republican or a Democrat, you're trying to move right. the plane safely. And this has been extremely difficult, I would think, for public administrators, especially as we see that there's a weaponization of Congress right now taking place in the House of Representatives. We see that it's just one unfounded charge after another with, again, no proof whatsoever about an election that was supposedly stolen a few years ago, which it wasn't. It was a free and fair election. And now to top it off, the Supreme Court, which sort of had an elevated status, is now we're finding out that a large number, or not a large number, but a certain number of the justices may have been involved in illegal monetary improprieties and lining their pockets and that type of thing. So it's almost like the whole infrastructure in this country is being undermined and it's systematic by people who are really, it looks like they're trying to destroy the country. How do you view that? Maybe I'm wrong on that. Well, no, I, I think you've raised a lot of um, a lot of important points. I, I um, you know, we began the conversation, Bill, by you asking me what uh, a public administrator is and does. Uh, and I told you that my parents are still trying to get the definition and I kind of gave you some <laughs> examples. But but, um, you know, you know, some of your viewers may uh, may find that um, would would find some resonance if I were to say that public administrators, um, many of them uh, comprise what was what was pejoratively referred to as the deep state um, in the federal government. If you said, well, who is this deep state um, that you've heard you heard different leaders talk about? Who are these people? Um, if you ever got an answer out of the politicians who said there was a deep state, the people that they were talking about were people who were doing the public good. They were the actual civil servants in the federal government doing the public good, administering policies. And that's a whole nother topic. But um, or um, who are the public administrators that they, they were the ones who were working at the uh, at the voting booths on Election Day, or they were the ones who were protecting the validity of the vote, the people who were getting up in Georgia at press conferences talking and defending the work of poll workers, those people are public administrators. The poll workers, many of them volunteers, were public administrators. So, you know, it, it, it's kind of an irony as I heard you kind of setting it up, Bill. You know, we, we had the president and we had Congress passing on a fairly bipartisan vote, uh, the infrastructure bill last year, which is pumping billions and billions of dollars, and that's objective, get people voting against it who are who are applauding the fact that millions and millions of dollars are coming into their states. Um, they've had a conversion. Um, but you've had all these people um, and all this money being pumped in uh, as a result of the infrastructure bill, which is great because we need to build the infrastructure in, in the United States. But the problem is not because of that. The irony is that as you're building the actual uh, brick and mortar of our infrastructure, uh, we have a hollowing out of the other part of our national infrastructure, and those are the those are the public administrators doing this work because they are being maligned, they are being characterized in terribly unfair terms and inaccurate terms along the lines of what you what you mentioned a, a little while ago, Bill, and they're either retiring early. Um, government has not become an employer of choice for promising young professionals who want to pursue a meaningful career that makes a difference. Um, and you've got a lot of people who are just trying to avoid any kind of public criticism because a lot of the public criticism is not based in fact. So, you know, you, you're, we, we, we're pouring a ton of 
of money into much needed money into into brick and mortar infrastructure yet we have the hollowing out of the public administration infrastructure and that's why the work of organizations like ASPA and others is so important because we have to continue to kind of sound the call um for for what is a bold uh and noble profession we certainly do and these are services that we need it's not a matter of they're optional, that type of thing, but we absolutely right. need them. And we need to have the best trained professionals to deliver those services and to do it in a non-ideological way. And that's the way it used to be to some degree, not too many years ago. But Bill Shields is so important. This topic, we'll have to come back and revisit it at a later date, but it's, it's so important and we need to reverse this very negative trend that's taking place. But I want to thank you so much for a very interesting and a very informative program. Bill, it's always a pleasure to join you and your audience. I, I really enjoy the opportunities uh, to be with you. We'll do it more often. I hope so. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.